Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. The truth requires two people, said Mr. Thoreau, one to speak it and one to hear it. Haven't we all, at one time or another, been sure we were in the right, yet no one would listen to us? It can be comical, it can be irritating, but what if your job or your freedom or even your life hung in the balance? That would be no laughing matter. Fritz! You ever hear of the boy who cried wolf? I'm not crying wolf, Captain. I'm crying treason. What do you mean? Look at the facts. What facts? Okay, okay. Hunches. Fritz, do me a favor. Forget it. Our mystery drama, The Rocket's Red Glare, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Exlax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Our country is guarded by a mighty fleet of planes, ships, and missiles. Hundreds of thousands of people work in our defense system. And the industries which build our sophisticated armaments employ tens of thousands more. Everyone involved is highly skilled and carefully screened. But with so many people, how can we be certain an occasional bad apple won't find its way into the barrel? The scene is Washington, D.C. Yes, Mr. Lomas? Uh, Lucille, uh, come in here, will you? I've got a letter to dictate. Uh. Yes, Mr. Lomas. Uh, sit down. It's to the Secretary of the Army, Pentagon, etc. Oh, sir. no. Why? What's the matter? My pencil just broke. Just a minute, Mr. Lomas. I'll be right back. No, 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 no. Don't go. Here, use my pen. Now, uh, dear Mr. Secretary, this is to inform you that the blueprints for the nuclear missile system known as Scorpio... Commissioned by the Army from Lomas Industries are virtually complete and that plans to build a working model can begin on schedule. Mr. Lomas. Mm, uh, what is it? You've already dictated this letter. Oh, I did? This morning. It's already typed up. All it needs is your signature. I'll just go get it. Uh, no, no, don't, don't leave. Mr. Lomas, are, are you all right? Uh, of course, I'm all right. It must be this, this heat wave. I think you need a rest. You haven't had a vacation in over a year. Uh, well, what? You seem distracted. What is it? Nothing. Can, can I bring you something? Some water? No, no, no. I'll be fine. But... Uh, just between us, Lucille, it's the Scorpio missile. It's nowhere near ready. But you said in your letter... I'm stalling. What? I thought that Mr. Simpson had finished the plans. And Jeff's been working on them day and night. He's got the best mind we've got, but... if we don't meet our deadline, the Army could withdraw the contract and we'd be ruined. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Must be something else I need you for. What was that? What? Well, it sounded like a shot from Mr. Simpson's office. That's all we know, Sergeant. I was dictating a letter to Miss Reed here, and we heard a shot, and when we got to Mr. Simpson's office, he was dead. With a gun in his hand and this note on the desk, hmm? 
Is that his handwriting? Uh, yes. It says, forgive me, but I must do this. I have no choice. Huh. That's not much of an explanation, is it? No, no, I guess it isn't. What was Simpson like? He was the kindest, most gentle person. And the most brilliant scientist in the firm. Any reason why he'd want to take his own life? Well, that's just it. There wasn't any. Must have been something wrong. No, he was one of the sanest, most well-adjusted people I've ever known. He didn't even drink or smoke. Hello, Fritz. Hi, Captain. This is Mr. Lomas, the president of Lomas Industries and the secretary, Miss Reed. Captain Suggs. Hello. I'm sorry about what happened. Uh, Sergeant, could we go now? Miss Reed is upset. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just keep yourselves available, so forth, you know. Oh, come on, Lucille. I'll drive you home. That's so tragic. I know. I don't know what we're going to do now. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just, uh... Just what do you mean by that? Well, Jeff Simpson was working on a new missile. If we don't make the deadline, we could start losing our defense contract. So Simpson was working against time? Yes, yes. But he loved pressure. He thrived on it. Thanks, Mr. Lomas. That's all. Have you done the autopsy yet, Captain? No, it's not completed. Come up with anything? If Mr. Simpson had a motive for suicide, he certainly kept it hidden. His home life was fine. He had no apparent enemies. No record of any mental health problems. What about physical? Was he dependent on any medications? Nope. <laughs> From everything we're hearing, this guy was a bionic wonder. <laughs> Only trouble is he's dead. Apparent suicide. You have doubts? That's what I'm paid for. Fritz, two lab technicians passing Simpson's door saw him pull the trigger. Okay, so it was suicide. Perfectly well-adjusted, successful, bright guy snuffs himself out and leaves a note saying he had to do it. Why? Well, he was dealing with top-secret stuff. He had access to information that could have been worth a lot. To the right people. Fritz, espionage is for the FBI. Yeah, but the suicide is ours, and I want to find out why. Well, where are you going? Have another talk with Lomas. Why? Because I didn't like him. Fred, it doesn't add up. Oh, with your permission. Thank you. But, Fritz, stay off espionage. Espionage? No, oh, that's impossible. Everyone's checked electronically when they enter and leave the building. Not even the smallest roll of microfilm could be smuggled out. Yeah, but it could be carried out, couldn't it? In broad daylight, by the right person? Uh, yes, I suppose. Now, what was this project Simpson was working on? Project Scorpio. But it wasn't complete. What's missing? Uh, conversion system or something. I'm, I'm really more of a businessman than a scientist myself. I... Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Complete. It'll be one of the most frightening systems ever developed. But trying to find a replacement for Jeff. Uh, I don't know. It never rains, but it pours. What do you mean? Lucille, uh, Miss Reed, my secretary, has asked for a leave of absence. Oh? Why? Oh, well, it wasn't a pretty sight, Sergeant. Still, you know the problems of finding a secretary with top security clearance? Uh, let's get back to this Project Scorpio. What makes it so frightening? Well, Jeff was developing a nuclear device of extraordinary simplicity. With these plans, I mean, if it were complete, of course, almost anyone could construct the missile. Including third world nations? No, oh, Jeff would never have done that. Look at his file. His patriotism was unquestioned. And he certainly had no interest in money. He'd always insist on paying for our drinks. Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. You told me that he didn't drink. Oh, 
Oh, a social drink for Pete's sake. An occasional cocktail at the Heritage Bar after work. It's hardly worth mentioning. Everything is worth mentioning, Mr. Lomas. Sergeant, if I'm not mistaken, you're exceeding your province in this investigation. Now, is that all? Yeah. Uh, you got a payphone in the building? You're welcome to use mine. Thanks, Mr. Lomas, but we're in Washington. I'd rather use a payphone. It was all the same to you. In the lobby. Downstairs. Just one other thing. Miss Reed. Where does she live? <laughs> Chips. Put me through to His Excellency. Uh, Captain, this Fritz here. Hey, listen, I think we ought to put a tail on Lucille Reed. Because she's just quit. That's why. You also run a check on Simpson's finances. Now, let's see. Well, what do you know, Miss Reed? Oh, hello, Sergeant. What are you doing here? Lomas told me that you quit. Oh, just for a week or two. I couldn't keep working. Not after yeah, what... Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. So why are you back? Oh, it's nothing, really. Mr. Lomas lent me his pen this morning, and in all the confusion, I forgot to return it. You live in, um, Fairfax County? Yes. And you drive 40 miles to return a fountain pen? No. Well, I mean... Well, it's Mr. Lomas' personal pen. Yeah, sure. Listen, I can keep a secret. What do you mean? Well, you got something going with the boss. It isn't the end of the world. Well, I dare you. I came back to return his pen and to see how he is now. Well, how was he? He was upset, naturally. But even before that, the man's tired. He's overworked. Seemed to have all his marbles to me. Why do you say that? When I went into his office this morning, just before Mr. Simpson... You know... He started dictating a letter he had already written. Yeah. And when I started to leave the room, he wouldn't let me go. He wouldn't. He seemed nervous, as if he didn't want to be left alone. Or as if he wanted you there? Yes. But not like you think. Look, Miss Reed, my apologies. If you'll excuse me. Is that him? Yeah. He's got the manners of a bull moose. Captain! He's recently moved here from New York, hasn't adapted to the diplomatic way of doing things. Well, let's get this over with. Okay. Come in, Sergeant. I think I've got our first real lead. Miss Reed? No, no, forget her. She's the scrupulous type. Drives 40 miles to return fountain pens. It's Lomas. I see. First, you want me to put a tail on Miss Reed and check Simpson's bank account, and now it's Lomas. I think he knew Simpson was going to shoot himself. The case is closed, Fritz. What? It's closed, Sergeant Mangle. Who is this? This is Barney Judd. He's from the Department of Defense. The Pentagon. So what gives? You mean you guys are taking over the investigation? There is no more investigation, Sergeant. But you got to listen to me. The case is closed. But I... No more questions. That's an order, Sergeant. You might as well tell a musician not to play his fiddle as tell a detective like Fritz Mangle to stop asking questions. However, we were all taught to respect authority, even when we think that authority might be wrong. For isn't obedience what holds a society together? I'll return shortly with Act Two. The less we know, the more we suspect, goes an old saw. Obviously, our friend Sergeant Mangle knows very little at this point, but suspects a great deal. Is it possible that something is rotten in the state of Denmark? Or, should we say, Lomas Industries? Or is the bully sergeant the owner of an overactive imagination? Fritzy, is that you? 
Daisy, open us a couple beers and sit down at the kitchen table. Uh-oh. He's brought his work home with him again. Okay. Let's review the case. Fritz. First off, we got a guy commit suicide. Eh? For no apparent reason. Fritz. What? What case are we talking about? This guy Jeff Simpson. A brainy scientist at Lomas Industries committed suicide this morning. Eh? But I got a hunch that Mr. Lomas, that was his boss, knew in advance that he was going to do it. Well, maybe he had a grudge against him and drove him to it. No, I don't think that's it. Simpson was designing a new weapon system that was going to save the firm. Yet his boss lets him pack himself in. Now, what's your first impression? That you got the wrong hunch. Something is screwy, Daisy. Because when I get back to the station house, suddenly I find the case has been closed. Just like that. No explanation. And furthermore, grab this one. I got down to see the autopsy report afterwards, and no one knows anything. It's confidential. What reason did this man have to take his own life? That's just it. There wasn't any reason. This guy had everything going for him. You sure it was suicide? Two guys saw him pull the trigger. Then obviously the key to the whole thing is finding out why he did it. Ah, you're cooking. Okay, dear. Who don't you like? Well, that guy Lomas, for one, and Judd. Who's Judd? Barney Judd from the Pentagon. He's the one who told the captain to nix the investigation. Don't you think the Pentagon knows what it's doing? Not necessarily. I'm going to keep a little eye on Lomas. But the case is closed. Oh. Oh, no. Just whose little eye are you planning to use? No, 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 listen, I got it all figured out already. No, I got a hair appointment in the morning. You see, Lomas' secretary quit on him. The job calls for top security clearance. Which I have under, under your my maiden name. name. How's your typing? I use the biblical method, seek and thou shalt find. How's your short name? They're both the same length. Good girl, you'll work out just swell. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Lomas? Uh, yes. Who are you? My name is Daisy Cochran. I'm from Office Temp. Oh, yes, yes. Do I have your references? Here. Mm. Uh, these are three years old. I'm a wife and mother. The job requires clearance. It's all there with my references, sir. Oh, well, that's good, but you know, it's only temporary. The agency did tell you that, didn't they? Yes, sir. My regular secretary will be back within a week or two. Yes, sir. This is an odd time of year for a vacation. What do you mean? Oh, just making conversation. There are 16 letters and four reports on the desk outside, Mrs. Cochran. I need them tight before noon. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, good morning. Can I help you? I'm here to see Mr. Lomas. Oh, but he doesn't have any appointments listed. He'll be expecting me. Who shall I say is here? Judd. Barney Judd. Judd? Oh, Judd. Oh, just a minute. I'll buzz him. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a little new here. There. Yes? Mr. Lomas? Yes, Miss Cochran. There's a Mr. Barney Judd to see you. Oh, oh yes. Send him right in. You can go in, sir. It's the... Uh... I know the way. Uh. Everything is set, Lomas. Can you get the plans out of here okay? No problem. You remember the time and place, Judd? North side of the Folger Library in the shrubbery. So Lomas is smuggling something out to this Mr. Judd. Did they say what? All he said was plans and the time and place. 
10 o'clock tonight at the Folger Library. I thought there was something a little bent out of shape about that Judd character. Pentagon, my foot. So now I suppose you'll want us to give up our bridge game tonight? Are you kidding? Just tell the Pagliaros to come an hour earlier, that's all. But Fritz, this Mr. Judd and... Whoever else is involved is bound to be watching Lomas the whole time. Sure, but only from the outside. My police ID will get us past the night watch. We're not into the library. I don't know. Maybe we should just call Captain Sun. But I'll wait. He's had his chance. I'm not involving him again until I've got some hard evidence. Anyway, Judge seems to have him under his thumb. <laughs> Can't wait to see the captain's face when we dump this in his lap. <laughs> I can't see a thing. The basement window's over there. Careful of those books. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Now we just open the window. <laughs> what time is it? Two minutes after ten. What if it's already taken place? If you hadn't taken so long to play that last hand... I wouldn't have if you hadn't jumped and shifted to space. Well, you weren't giving me the right signal. I did so. we do now? Wait and nap, Judd? No, no. There may be others with them. The important thing is making sure they don't get those plans. Can you reach them? Not quite. You're smaller. Squeeze through the window. Just enough cut. Got him. Let's get out of here and see what we've reeled in. The envelope says Scorpio Project. What? Isn't that what you said Simpson was working on? Yeah, but according to Lois, the plans weren't complete yet. Well, now what do we do? You know, this may work out better than we thought. I think it's time we found out just what those plans are. We still aren't going to the captain? I'm going to the captain. What about me? You're taking these plans over to Brian Keaton. That scientist friend of yours? A nuclear scientist. I want him to check these out. Who are you calling? Oh, I hate to disturb my honored leader at home, but we'd better get tails on Lomas and Judd right away. When they... Find out their little rendezvous didn't work. We don't want them panicking and taking refuge in some foreign embassy. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. Hello, Mrs. Suggs. It's Sergeant Mangle. Yeah, can, can I speak to his eminence? What? I see. Thank you. What's the matter? Captain went back to headquarters at 9.30 this evening. What do you think that means? I don't know. But somehow I get this lousy feeling. I just goofed. You idiot! You meddling, incompetent, arrogant fool! Why do you insist on making a point of never listening to me? I told you the case was closed. Captain, sir. Uh, don't tell me, Mr. Judd. I already know the whole story and then some. Sergeant Mangle, what's he doing here? This Mr. Judd is the man who took the plans. What? I told you we should have let him in on it from the beginning. He's like a kid. If you tell him not to do something without giving him a reason, he won't listen to you. Sergeant Mangle, that was a setup, a stakeout. Those plans were fake. They were meant as bait to trap a ring of foreign operatives. I know, sir. Captain Suggs told me. Did he also tell you that before he committed suicide, Mr. Simpson confessed to selling top-secret documents to those agents? No. He told Lomas everything. Lomas? That's right. That's why he killed himself. Because he couldn't live with himself any longer and he was in too deep to get out. Simpson's last redeeming act was to tell Lomas the place and time of the next drop. Lomas agreed to help us. That's why we told you city cops to stop your investigation. 
defense was handling this. All right, I'm sorry. I just had a hunch. I don't think your hunches will be needed for a while, Sergeant. As of this moment, I'm suspending you from the force. Indefinitely. Turn in your badge. My badge? And your service revolver. Can I go now, sir? Please. Now, just a minute, Mr. Mangle. Where are the plans now? They're with a friend of mine. What? A man named Brian Keaton. He's a scientist. I wanted him to check him out. Where does he live? In Arlington, Mason Avenue. I'll get him back. I'm sorry, Captain. Ah, uh, there's one more thing, Mr. Mangle. Just how did you know about that drop tonight? Rather not tell you, Mr. Judd. I really don't see the matters now. I insist you tell me. I protect my sources, Mr. Judd. Well, you've got to hand it to him. He's resourceful. I don't trust him. No, he's honest, Mr. Judd. He's just a little impulsive, that's mm -hmm. all. His impulsiveness this evening may prove costly. I'm sure you'll come up with a way to accomplish what has to be done. Fritz is out of your hair now. I'm not so sure. Fritz, you're back. Just barely. Why, what happened? Captain Suggs and Mr. Barney Judd took turns using me for basketball. What? I'm afraid I really lost up good this time, Daisy. That whole episode tonight at the library, the plot we foiled, it was a stakeout. Fritz. It was a trap. The only trouble was we're the ones who sprung it. Fritz, Brian Keaton's been trying to call you for nearly an hour. I know, I know. The plans are fake. No, they're not. What? Brian's checked them over thoroughly, and they are a completely operational blueprint for one of the most deadly weapon systems he's ever seen. It was Ben Franklin who first said the only two certainties in life were death and taxes. But death comes only at the end, and taxes but once a year. That leaves a great deal of time for the uncertainties. And how are we to deal with those? Fortunately, in our case, there is a third certainty we may rely on, and that is, I shall return in a moment with our final act. Like the lame leading the blind, Daisy and Fritz Mangle seem to be stumbling into an ever-deepening crater of intrigue and mystery. From the very first, with the strange suicide of Jeff Simpson, events and people have not been what they seem. The plans are operational? Brian said they were theoretical, of course. They'd have to be tested. Yeah, but none of the steps were missing. There wasn't a, a conversion system or something that wasn't complete. No. <sighs> Roma certainly went out of his way to make us all think so. So that was the plan, hmm? He dupes the Pentagon, actually gets them to help him make the exchange. But if there was a stakeout, like Judd said... Yeah, but these foreign operatives would know that, right? And Lomas would tip them off. So they'd be prepared in advance to give him the slip. And Lomas is in the clear. The plan, so far as the Pentagon knows, were fake. Or at least missing the final step. And he's free to keep passing information from his firm's other contract. Who are you calling? Well, I've got to try to catch Judd and Suggs at headquarters. Hello, is, is Captain Suggs still in his office? He has? No, thanks. I uh, just left. It'll be 45 minutes before he gets home. We don't have that much time. What if they tell Lomas what happened? They'll panic and run for asylum. That's the trouble with Washington. Too many free spaces. It was a lot easier to corner a rat in New York. What about Judd? Yeah, maybe I can reach him. It's worth a try. If I call a night desk at the Pentagon, they ought to have a number for him. Hello, this is Detective Sergeant Mangle of the Washington Police. Yeah, I'm trying to reach an employee of yours, a Mr. Barney Judd. Yes, I know it's 12 o'clock at night. I want his home phone. 
No, I can't come down there in person. There isn't time. It's a matter of national defense. Yeah, yeah, I'll hold. Guy who invented bureaucracies ought to be shot. They won't give you the number. Not without identification. She's getting a supervisor. Well, the Pentagon's only a few minutes away. I can't identify myself. I've been suspended. What? What? What for? For messing up their trap tonight. Hello? Hello, is a supervisor? Yeah, look, it's imperative that I reach Barney Judd to just... What? What? Uh, I see. Thank you. Fritz, what is it? There's no one by that name who works for defense. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's right. I told Judd Brian's name. Why? He made a point of asking where the plans were. Brian, we've got to get over there right away. Well, I'm going alone. Why? For the same reason that the president and vice president don't fly together on the same plane in case something goes wrong. Brian. Brian, it's me, Fritz. Open up. Brian. Hey, the door's open. Brian? Brian? He isn't here. What? That's right, Mr. Mangle. He isn't. Chuck, why do you persist in interfering? Where's Brian? You've been told this case was closed. You've even been suspended from the force. By what authority are you here? I could ask you the same question, George. Hello, Fritz. Who's... Captain! What... What's going on? Where's Brian? He's been arrested for possession of stolen documents. Captain, do you know what's happening? Those plans weren't fake. They are fully operational. And what's more, I think Mr. Judd here knows they are. Furthermore, I don't know who this guy is working for, but it isn't the Department of Defense. I called them. They've never heard of him. Now are you going to believe me? Lomas is guilty of treason, and Judd is his accomplice. Well, Captain, Fritz, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you under arrest. Me? What for? Conspiring to steal classified information. Why won't you listen to me? It's him you ought to be arresting. Don't you know what'll happen if those plans get into the wrong hands? Put out your wrist, Fritz. Handcuffs? On me? Put them out. Not on your life. Fritz! He wouldn't even trust me. I just can't believe he's involved, too. The fact is, neither Judd nor the captain was surprised when I told them the plans weren't fake. And what about the clam up on Simpson's autopsy report? No, sir. From here on out, as far as I'm concerned, they're all in it together. Lomas, Judd, and the captain. But what can you do? You're a fugitive. Oh, if I could just get something concrete on Lomas, maybe then someone would listen to me. Who? Oh. Who can you go to now? Uh, I've got no choice, have I? Oh, no. You mean... The FBI. But, Fritz, that's against your principle. I know, I know. How can you get Lomas? I think the answer to that lies right back at the beginning. Jeff Simpson's death. What are we doing in this bar? It's a long shot, but Lomas Excuse told me... Excuse me. Oh. I take a walk, mister. We, we've got no spare change. I know Mario, the bartender, he said you was looking for information about a fella named Simpson. Yeah? Don't tell me you know him. No, but I recognize his face from the newspaper. Well, how did you recognize him if you didn't know him? Well, because I talked to him. Or rather, he talked to me. When? Oh, a couple of nights ago. I never seen a guy so upset. I I really felt sorry for him, you know? What did he say? Hey, uh, maybe you could... Uh... Oh, oh, yeah, sure, sure. What do you want? 
Oh, it's just, just a whiskey. A bartender? Uh, maybe a double. Yeah, give me give me a double whiskey here for my friend. Hmm? Sit down. Fritz, what is this? <sighs> Someone doesn't want Simpson's autopsy report known, right? We know how he died, so I figure it's got to be something else. You mean like something he already had in his body? Yeah, like alcohol. Lomas told me he and Simpson came here sometimes. Like I say, it's a long shot, but it's the only bullet we got left in our gun. Uh, I have feeling, pal. Ready? Oh, yeah. So uh, what was this guy Simpson so so upset about? Well, he was he was scared, you know, really scared. He, he just found out from some doctor that he'd been exposed to nuclear something. Radiation? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. He kept saying his mind was going. It was only a matter of time. Man, he was really concerned about his mind. So that was it. That's terrible. I'd sure like to know the name of the labs that ran those tests. Hey, 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 ain't this what you want? What? He left this piece of paper. He was staring at it all night. Kept crumpling it up. Let me see that. When he left here, he must have forgot it. Keystone Labs. I thought I'd better hang on to it in case he came back. Poor guy. I never thought he'd... Uh, um, he was scared. Acting like he didn't even want people to get near him, you know? Like he might contaminate him or something. I guess he didn't figure I counted. Look, pal, you were a big help. Here, here's a five. Oh. At least you'll know where your next one's coming from for a while, huh? Hey, thanks, mister. Ma'am. Oh, that poor man. Well, at least we know now why Simpson killed himself. But I don't see how that implicates Lomas. Look, I'm going to have to put up at a hotel tonight. Now, I got one last thing to check out in the morning. And then I'll give you a call at work to tell you what I want you to do. And then? I'm coming to Lomas's office. Why? To give myself up. Good morning, Miss Griffin. Good morning, Mr. Lomas. Look, I'll be in Jeff Simpson's uh, uh, old office for a few minutes. If there are any calls, just transfer them in there. Okay. Nine thirty-five. What's keeping Fritz? He's got to arrive before... Hi. Hi, Daisy. Where have you been? Is the, uh, is the coast still clear? Yes, but you'd better hurry. It's 9.35. You got the folder? Here. Just like the one the Scorpio plans were in. Good. Where, where's Lomas? He's in Simpson's office. I don't get it. He spent half a yesterday in there, too. I think I can help him out. Let's just hope the timing works. What? Well, uh, morning, Lomas. Sergeant Mangle. Ex-Sergeant Mangle. I've been dismissed from the force. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, why? Because I've been making a nuisance of myself by insisting you were guilty of treason. That's ridiculous. Apparently so. I, um, interrupted you. You were looking for something when I came in? Uh, looking? Uh, yeah. Wouldn't by any chance be this way. A blood report from Keystone Labs. How did you get it? I think the question is, how did Jeff Simpson get it? What do you mean? A seasoned nuclear scientist so careless as to expose himself to radiation? Why, well, it's not unheard of. Mr. Lomas, I checked with the lab. Mr. Simpson's annual checkup was negative. Well, he... I don't think it would take a handwriting genius to say... Who wrote this report? I don't know what you're talking about. Lomas, you can level with me. After all, we're both criminals. What? There's a warrant out for my arrest. What for? Stealing classified documents. We're in the same business. What documents? The plans for the Scorpio missile. You've got those? I was at the Folger Library last night. I beat your pal Judd to the punch. Oh, by the way, I had a friend of mine take a look at those plans. 
I was very embarrassed. What do you mean? Well, you told me those plans weren't operational. Where are the plans now? They're right here in this folder. Uh, what do you want from me? You see, no one believes me, Lomas. But I want the personal satisfaction of hearing the truth from you. Yes. Yes. I forged that lab report of Simpson's blood. The heat was on. There was a suspicion of a leak, so I had to give the feds a guilty party. What else do you want to know? That I've been selling information to foreign agents? For sure. You know how hard it is to make a steady buck in this business? Some politician knows the right guys, and suddenly the competition gets my contract. Or you have to expand your plant facilities for a really big job, the kind you dream about. And then, when it's finished, goodbye, thank you very much. You're left with an overhead that would sink a battleship. Is that enough? Yes, Mr. Lomas, that's just fine. Good. Now it's my turn. You shouldn't have brought those plans back into the building, Mangle, because you're never going to get them out of here again. Or oh, that phony lab report, either. Miss Cochran? Yes, Mr. Lomas? Ask security to send up two guards. Uh, yes, Mr. Lomas. Wait a minute. Daisy. Daisy. Yes, Fred? Isn't anyone out there? Yes. Well, what's the matter? Didn't you leave the intercom on like I told you? Yes. What's going on? How do you know my secretary? Your secretary, Mr. Lomas, happens to be my wife, and you've just treated the FBI to a nice, neat confession. Hello, Mr. Mangle. What? Judd, how did you get... Relax. Okay, Mr. Lomas. You're under arrest. Hey, what gives? You were right, Mangle. I don't work for defense. I'm with the FBI. The FBI? That's right. Mr. Lomas, we got you in our sights a couple of weeks ago. We were hoping to nail a few of your contact agents as well, but Mr. Mangle here has seen fit to make that impossible now. All right, come on. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, Sergeant Mangle. You're reinstated. Thanks, Captain. At least you got us a nice confession out of Lomas. Sorry about the rest of it, sir. I didn't no, know. Okay, okay. But, Fritz, for next time, when you don't know, the next best thing to do is listen. So Lomas was guilty driven to desperate acts by the financial uncertainty of his business. That word, uncertainty, again. But people should be stronger-willed, you say. Of course. And doesn't it seem an abomination that a man should seek to provide for his own financial security, heedless of the terror and destruction he might be unleashing elsewhere in the world? Of course, I shall return shortly. This time, nothing happened. The villain was caught, and everyone else turned out to be on the right side. But what about next time? Are we really to be trusted with our own terrible inventions? Well, it seems we have no choice, and therefore we might as well be optimistic. But we'd do well to never forget the old Latin proverb, who will guard the guards? Our cast included Mason Adams, Robert Dryden, Catherine Byers, and Sam Gray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. episode of CBS Radio Mystery League.